Greetings, summoners. Cosmic here, and welcome back to another Battle Spirits Saga video. And today we're going to be talking about the yellow reveals from Set 3 Aquatic Invaders and also provide a sample list at the end of the video for new players to jump in with the set. So, again, these are meant to be more intro friendly and a great way to onboard players into Battle Spirits Saga. But with the more competitive focus in mind, of course, you'll want to change up a few cards, but they're meant to be as streamlined as possible for what they want to be doing. So, with that out of the way, and with this gorgeous SPR, and honestly, one of my favorites from the set i think just yellow sprs in general look the best uh just because the way the color themes play off very very well we have the red queen and yes we got one really good x rare that pushes a archetype and to a spot where it needed to be competitive and then we have the other one which is just fun to play and i don't know what it's for and i other than like one deck in particular so i love the red queen it's gonna be super fun with the other landers it's exactly what that archetype wanted but I do fear that it is going to be a little bit limited and doesn't shine as well as the Fabled Beast package does. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it. The Empress Guardian Red Queen. And of course, just a quick snapshot of the other landers next to it, which we're going to talk about them more in detail as the video goes on. Because spoiler, most of them are from set three. But we do have King Charles in set two, which as a reminder, lets you play spirits off the top of your deck for free. So when you're playing the Red Queen, you have to play four of them, which also means you unfortunately have to play some number of the topaz which we're going to get to later but in theory what this deck wants to be doing is this is the vomit stuff onto your board deck this is meant to be for whatever reason we couldn't get it with two cost aggro right or two cost rush we're going to get other lander rush now yes it's going to be slightly slower because it does take some turns to build up you got to play your topaz you got to play your king charles all that good stuff but when it all comes online, effectively what you're going to be able to do is play the Red Queen. You get to go into Charles. Charles is going to find you double the spirits. Or if you just have the other ones, like the three drop we're going to be talking about to set up the top of your deck. And then just very quickly spam out a lot of these spirits. Now, we do know that in yellow, you have things like Blessed Cathedral from set one. So you're able to, you know, get all of these cores. But where does this really line up, right? So as a deck itself... One thing that really comes to mind is, yes, your spirits are going to be lower. You're going to lo uh, lower BP. You're going to largely revolve around Joker to get in those last couple points of chip damage. But you're otherwise just going wide enough. But what is that really good against, right? All your spirits are weaker against red. Purple is going to have cursed combo. Oh, wait, green. Green is a thing in the set. And obviously, with all the major focus around Gale... This is exactly what you want to be doing, right? You're able to then match against green where they're playing these two or three gales, but you don't care. Your board is like 10 wide and green's going to do nothing about that other than like Elzimoth, right? So I like this idea that yellow now has a way to just flood the board very well where failed beasts admittedly can be a little bit slow, right? You have like your dual eagle and you have your hippo, but anyone that's played current yellow versions into green it feels really bad. Now, obviously, Bless can get you, like, the extra turn or two that you really need and give you that little bit of life gain, but it doesn't feel as, you know, solid, especially with the new Tokiwa entering the field. So, Fabled Beast really feels more of, like, a mid, even late game style of deck with the Genbu that we're going to talk about later, where Red Queen is really coming online and says, like, let's play the wide game. I'm going to be able to get the double the triggers. And what's not to be missed that I really like about this card itself as long as it comes in at level two, which, you know, it's two cores, you're going to have it come in at level two, um, it's going to kill something for a 4K minus. And minus 4K on something is actually a pretty big deal, right? That we know that's one of the special thresholds. So this does count as a removal for itself, as well as setting up your extra turns, right? Like kill, killing even Ant-Man worker, right? It's still going to feel good. So this, again, is a absolute must play in the other lander archetype. And you have to play for it's really, really insane at what it wants to be enabling. But I think ultimately you're going to fall back to, okay, let's think about the meta overall. Let's think about where this lines up versus Fable Beast. And I have to imagine if nothing else because of Phantasmal Paradise, right? And being able to stick on the board a little bit better. You're going to be very heavily pushed towards the Fable Beast side of things, which is why it's been good, so good in set one and set two. So... Again, overall, I think you're going to fall a little bit behind Fable Beast, but I do really appreciate Red Queen for the other lander archetype, and we might get more other landers. Like, I know we're going to get more other landers because of how big it was in Japanese Battle Spirits, so I'm sure there's going to be even more in Set 4, but just a couple more Spirits I think could really round it out nicely that at the very worst, like, maybe it's unplayable, whatever, right? At, at the worst, at the absolute worst thing ever for Red Queen it is going to be a stupid fun deck to play, right? Like getting those King Charles combos and flooding the field and getting all these spirits, like that is fun. And that is something that Battle Spirits really needed, right? A lot of set one and set two has just been like, 
red good stuff, purple good stuff, white kill you with derms sort of stuff, right? So it's just been these very, okay, play the value, play like whatever the best cards are and nothing that's like super on theme until like white got there at the end where like we went back to machine beasts and you're just playing like elephants and elks and all that stuff. But you know, it really didn't feel like you have that big fun payoff turns other than like, I, I'm sure some people will say Gagano's fun. Not for me personally. Right. Um, but the other colors kind of really missed out on that or in purple, all you had is like, Ooh, Bishop curse dragon was at like your top end, but then nothing in the middle game other than like, all right, we're drawing cards off Purple Smoke Valley. So having this be more of like a full cohesive deck that finally comes together and really rewards those big brain plays with King Charles into Vomit on the board into all these removals, I think is going to be very welcoming for a lot of players. So again, love Red Queen just from a archetype standpoint and what it's going to do, but I do think it's going to fall off a little bit behind Fabled Beast. And that was probably the longest part of a card discussion I'm going to do, but let's get into the other one. So again, other landers, a lot of these are like insane must play because you're playing the archetype, right? So if we're thinking this in the context of where does this card sit in yellow overall versus where does this card sit in other landers, you know, yellow overall, meh. Yellow other landers, obviously insane must play. It has, it's going to cycle itself always because you're always going to want this guy to be at 4K. That's already fine. Uh, but then when summon, it's going to get you something else. So again, it's just the top card. If it has the same cost of any of your spirits, add it to your hand. So we're going to be playing things like Blessed Cathedral. He's a four drop. He's going to count himself. Oh, it's going to count things like Absolute Ice Shield. Oh, it's going to counter other four cost cards, right? So very quickly, you find yourself that this guy is basically just going to give you two cards every single time. Obviously, small disclaimer, not every, every single time, but basically every time um, because you're going to be able to line up your board. And, and this is the other part I really like. It's now giving players the deck building payoff that we didn't really have in a way that it's really going to reward you for knowing, okay, how many three costs, how many four costs, how many five costs, how many six car cost cards do I have in the deck? What's in my trash? What's in the field? What's in my hand? What's the probability of hitting a three versus four versus five versus six, right? And yes, it's again going to rely on those big brain plays to really make sure you're getting this with the maximum efficiency. But this card is insane. And I'm so upset that it didn't get a promo for how good it's going to be in the other lander archetype. Like this guy, like King Charles is obviously the, the head honcho, the king and queen. They're the, the top of the top. They're always what you want to combo together. And then Pumpty Dumpty, which is a hilarious name, by the way, is just right below that, right? Super strong card for what it wants to be doing in the other land archetype. And this is absolutely a slam dunk for what they wanted, as well as the other one that really helps bring this all together. So again, the one thing I will say is kind of like a, a slops to um, the, the set design from set to set, like this would have been so cool in set two, right? Like get King Charles and then be like, oh, here's King Charles. Here's the obvious X-ray for him, right? So it's been weird to see these like, okay, I really like this design from set two, but now I have to wait for set three or set four. So it feels like the sets got shuffled around a little bit and I don't really understand how that might have happened. But, it, you know, as we see now other landers come together in this set, it's very clearly that they should have been two and three smashed together. But Pumpty Dumpty, again, draws you a bunch of cards, fits a four drop hits cathedral hits absolute ice shield just basically hits whatever you want uh you know in that deck depending on how you the player build it and then of course from there we have the other one that just is insane and brings this all together we have first off it's a penton love that little dude for real it's a three cost with three reduction right we're finally getting more of these maximum reductions in yellow which look bondi i get it you're scared you don't want to have like full-on yellow aggro be a thing but please do more of this where it's like the key enablers or combo pieces at a minimum for these archetypes are free to play for that turn, right? So now with our new wonderful card soldier Penten, yes, you are playing in the when some of the deck we've already talked about. There's, you're going to get hit by a star blessed draw. Nothing you can do about that other than the fact that you're getting to play a bunch of stuff for free. So you're beating the card advantage that way, right? Select another lander spirit from your trash and return to top of your deck. So now we have the ability to... Again, as we've talked about now, these three, four, five, and six costs that all line up perfectly, you get to say, okay, whatever I'm missing, I'm going to put on top. Or heaven forbid, you have King Charles and Queen already in play, and you stack a Charles on top, and now suddenly it's just like Charles, 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 Queen, 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 Queen triggers. Like, they're just popping off in the most insane way, right? And then, of course, there's also the other small detail, which it's not worth it now, but it might be at some point where King Charles does turn your other yellow spirits into other landers. So the timing and when you're getting these extra wind summons might matter, but it really doesn't, at least for now. You are just playing the other lander cycle. So again, where does this card fit in the overall archetype? Obviously, 
10 out of 10, massive slam dunk, exactly what the archetype wanted outside of yellow, or like outside of that archetype in yellow, obviously it, it's not doing anything, but this is more the design that I wanna see, especially with uh, Pumpty Dumpty and now the Soldier Pantan. This is exactly what you want to push these archetypes forward. And yes, is the payoff gonna be worth it enough in the end? Remains to be seen, because obviously Topaz Sanctuary does feel pretty bad, all things considered. But at a minimum, we're now able to give King Charles kind of the context that he wanted to, to pop off, which he didn't have in set two. So I think the three drop and the four drop, especially again, because it lines up very well with what how you want to cycle these cards, right? Absolutely huge slam dunk. But I do think this is ultimately all going to fall behind a little bit from the Fabled Beast perspective. Moving on from there, now kind of threading the needle as it were and getting the two between them is the other lander fabled beast so it is a two drop for fabled beast which is super exciting but its bps are super bad but it reduces the cost of the next yellow magic you play which is like super awesome for topaz radiance for example because then you just get to play it for free so i haven't gotten a a, a great sense of where i want to put this yet um it does line up into the fabled beast deck but something you have to remember about this card in particular and about where fabled beast is as a overall archetype a lot of the reasons why it has done so well uh, in those shells that we've seen at least early in the set one meta, and then for set two, it obviously fell off for a variety of reasons, is that the only when summon that you really had to play, if you even wanted to play it, was Flying Turtle, and a lot of the times you ended up cutting it anyways. However, now we're at a point where, yes, we have enough of a Fabled Beast density, it's probably just fine to play it, but the Fabled Beast package overall has shifted to a higher cost, and when we have other two drops that we can just play that have better BP thresholds or even three drops that have better BP thresholds and we don't really care about that one reduction, it really just falls off. And then from the other lander side of this, right, we just don't care about this card 10 out of 10 times. So this is one that I really wish, first off, it should have been free, right? It should have been a two cost two reduction at a bare minimum. From there, it would have been really nice to see at least a four for three, right, for three cores, just to make sure it hits that that next number. But I think this is one where they were just trying to be very safe on it, and that's where it landed up where it did. So as we're talking about, like, here's the cards that have been really good for Other Lander and really good for Fable Beast. This one, I think, just falls to the pits between both of them. Now, if we do see more of the yellow magic part of this mattering a lot more, and we get some, like, super low to the ground, like, I think this is great in two-cost aggro, but that's not really a, th a thing, right, uh, as it were right now, because when you're playing the two-cost deck, you're now saying, okay, well, now I have, like, Drowsy Fumes for free, uh, Topaz Radiance for free. It's a two-drop that we can play off Kate Sith uh, or get off Cat Sith for free, right? It lines up a lot better in that regard, or even if, like, for some reason, Raphael comes together where it's like, okay, we just want a two-cost level one spirit that can make a magic free. And that's all fine, but, like, it hasn't been there yet, so... There, again, wants to be this two-cost kind of brew that just isn't there. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of what two-cost wanted to be doing, other lander is just going to be doing better, you know, 99 times out of 100. So this is one that I, I feel like it just misses the mark on, on so many different ways that unless we get something that can really help the two-cost payoff, it's just not going to find a home. Because, again, in other lander, you're not going to want it ever in fable beast there's just other stuff you can be doing and it's very quickly like no matter what we get in the next set is probably gonna be replacing a two a two drop fable beast spirit um or in a lot of cases like if you really want to go the distance and make like a yellow purple list well then you can use the two drop from the lorsa plus monaka to have like this recycling on summon kill spell or kill combo that you can do with impaler forest and spiral tower right so um one that i think that is very interesting i guess i should say uh, at the least but i'm not quite sure where it finds a home all right let's talk about it let's talk about first off how gorgeous is this artwork and i didn't pull i didn't pull the uh i think it's sword champion promos if i remember but like we're also getting promo versions of these cards and the topaz radiance is just absolutely gorgeous but out of all the sanctuaries why is it that effect like i can appreciate the idea that in a world where you have multiple of these on board somehow you're up a billion cores you just get to you know look at your opponent's hand see what they have maybe they have the ice shield maybe maybe you gain knowledge that they have a thorn prison but a lot of the times in yellow like you just gotta swing for the fences anyways and like if they got it they got it sort of mentality so topaz sanctuary does kind of let me down a little bit um but the part of this that i really like again for other landers is yes it's a three drop and we know that we already care about three drops right based on the penance so kind of like 
it checks that box. It does have bless, which is nice. It's something that is welcome. Like even just like turning this card sideways, getting a quick bless trigger, going up a life, that part is welcome. And when we have the uh, during your opponent's attack step, right now it's playing into the blessed cathedral to either ramp cards or draw, or ramp cores or draw cards. That can be fine as well, right? So the, the problem is that we are cycling them and it's only two cards that we get to see for Topaz Sanctuary. So it is kind of hard to like, I get that yellow wants to be destroying multiple things um, like on defense to really cycle through Blessed Cathedral. So maybe there's a point where it's like, hey, I'm cycling enough cards. I don't care anyways. Obviously, Other Landers just helps you put more and more spirits you know, into uh, the top of the deck, which then gets onto the field, which then adds fuel to this fairy. So like that all works together. But I really wish this would have been like top three, and I really wish Topaz Sanctuary would have done a little bit more. So, again, in the context of like other landers, you have to be playing it. And I think Impulsive Pilgrim, looking back at where it lines up versus the other Pilgrims, I think it is going to be one of the best for what it wants to be doing. But if it's one of the best Pilgrims, or is definitely the best Pilgrim for the archetype that wants it. I guess it makes sense that Topaz Sanctuary had to be the worst of the sanctuaries in set two. So it's one of those things that like, I get it. It's fine for what it wants to be doing, but it hurts so much. And I really wish Topaz Sanctuary would have been a little bit better, but at least the Impulsive Pilgrim checks all the boxes you could ask for in terms of it works when you want it to. It has Blessed on top of it. It can go to 4K for a reasonable amount if it wants to. It's a three drop for other landers, so it does help cycle for your other landers when you're checking off King Charles. Like, all that is fine. But I do wish it had a little bit more to it. But again, hey, it can't always have the most broken things, and I think at least it does a good enough job at fitting into the shell where it wants to fit. Moving on from there, the all-star, in my opinion, 10 millennia turtle genbu all right so finally we got we got something that we needed that isn't just putting derm into decks right so genbu is a eight cost four reduction so at least i very much appreciate that it does have four reduction again one of those things with how much god beast can get reduced i really wish they would have just gone the full amount of just give this guy the six reduction but during your attack step select one of your at the during your attacks at the start of the step i should say select one of your favorable beast spirits it cannot be blocked by your opponent's spirits with effects listed during this turn so it can only be blocked by vanillas so spoiler it's going to make something unblockable and then during your attack step when one of your favorable beast spirits is destroyed by your opponent select one of your favorable beast spirits and refresh it so this does put an insane amount of pressure on our opponent and also gives us a unblockable check at the end of the day that the Fable Beast deck really wanted, right? So now we get to do things like, uh, and it does say one of your others, right? So Genbu does have to work with something else, but if you have two Genbus and the Genbu select one, yeah, 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 right? But Genbu is going to select Dual Eagle 99 times out of 100, right? Dual Eagle is now going to be able to swing. You're going to gain Bless, so you're going to gain a life uh, unless they have Dream Bomb of something, of course. And then it puts your opponent in a very interesting situation, right? Now we can have things like Aravata like, that can swing, get a two-cost spirit back from your trash, trigger Blessed Cathedral, get a core, ramp, ramp a card, and then untap your Dual Eagle, who that is going, going, going to attack again. So we really do get this heavy cycle part of, okay, no matter what, this first guy is coming across, it has Blessed, we're getting a life, you have to deal with it, right? And then on the other side of it, we now say, okay, well, these other spirits are now very lethal. So unless you have like a Thorn Prison or a Dream Bomb, right? There's a different, a couple different signs of interaction that it could have. Genbu puts on a lot of pressure very, very quickly. And then, of course, if we have something like Ryut, then we shut off the bounce side of it as well. So this is, in my opinion, exactly what the deck wanted. And is absolutely insane for the Fable Beast archetype. And then again, you can see I just put a screenshot there of all the various Fable Beasts that we have. But we have a list at the end that you can just go, you know, screenshot that and use it as a working list if you want to. But Genbu, I think, really does provide a lot of what we were missing in Yellow's top end that now we can build the Fable Beast deck that does not have to be so two cost focused, which is a really important part, right? Moving away from God Beast. And now in multiples is going to be a massive threat himself. So Genbu, 10 out of 10, love this dude. For sure going to give Fable Beast some extra life that they needed uh, within set three. So I really do think that yellow is going to have a nice spot once we're able to get all these unblockable blessed triggers, right? At the end of the day, that is what this is allowing for. And heaven forbid we find a world where we need like somersault and all that stuff as well. 
Sure, it is just now Fable Beast Blessed Unblockable the deck, and this also pairs up well with Phantom Beast King Lin. Shout out to, you know, set one cards, which now, because we have so many Fable Beasts that we want to be playing, we can just make our opponent's entire board level one and then make Dual Eagle even better. So, again, huge shout out. I think this one card is, like, the card that Yellow gets out of this entire set, and everything else does fall a little bit short, but again, at least other landers will be fun to play and has all this really fun sequencing stuff that you can pull off where Fable Beast admittedly is not fun to play, but it is just like, hey, draw a bunch of cards, have yellow spirits, play my big dude, swing for game, right? It feels much more linear in that regard to what Gagano Rex was doing in set one that now yellow has its own way to be doing it. And now we just have a big payoff of our own. So Again, winning is cool, don't get me wrong, but I think between the two of them, Otherlander is way better to play and way more fun, but Genbu does give Fable Beast kind of what it wanted at the end of the day to be a established deck. Moving on from there, we have the six cost Angel with Luster, which is insane beyond belief, right? It's a six cost, so it, it dodges uh, Floodstream, which is like the big question of the next set. It combos very well with Exhaust Nexus. That's now just going to give 5k. And it does have some nice BP thresholds to hit because we're going to be playing like Flower Garden, which gets this a 7k at three cores. Nothing is blocking this thing. The thing I will say, of course, is that yes, Michaela, very, very good. Yes, Angel Flagellum, very, very good. Clavis, getting back Exhaust Nexus uh, when you need them to, very, very good, right? Especially with this card, it allows you to just combo off extra if you really need to because it's at any time during your attack step. So even if you only have one uh, Exhaust Nexus, right? You, you attack with this first, use Exhaust Nexus, shrink everything by 5K, it goes back to your hand, and then you just attack with whatever other spirit you want to burn the exhaust nexus, and then Clavis lets you get it back. So you are going to be able to board wipe your opponent quite easily with Luster in this new meta. But again, it requires a lot of setup, and Luster's main problem has always been your early game is awful, like just non-existent awful. So I'm curious to see how much this can really help push the Luster archetype, but I'm going to go as far as to say that I think the other lander is even better than this, right? So my yellow tier list, you know, whatever you want to call it for now, is going to be like Fable Beast, uh, other lander, uh, luster, and then two costs, like the four different archetypes in yellow that we have in, in that order. And then, of course, I think there's a very strong gap between uh, some of those, especially with two costs being like all the way at the bottom. But again, it's hard to complain when we are looking to a floodstream meta in terms of like, how do we not just automatically die to the meta with our luster getting interrupted? And it's well, print a six cost. It really should have had more reductions. That's like the main thing I'm going to take an issue with here, but uh, do welcome this card for what it wants to be doing because this plus exhaust nexus is just absolutely absurd. On the other side of this, we got Rapier Angel with the more aggressive side of luster, right? So this is a four cost, three reduction, comes down super early. You can pay the cores. It's going to make it itself a 3k. So the you put it down to level one so it's gonna be a 5k um, and then you can still give it luster so now we're we're in this position where it's like yes we have to burn the cores that we would have just you know been saving because it has the reduction as high as it as it has right and and then what are we doing like okay so it's a 5k we play like topaz radiance it gets up to a 7k I don't love that. Like, I get that this is meant to be like more the aggro side of Luster, like just the, play the low cost spirits, have a little bit of build up, and then just like win the game that way, where you're getting all these early angelic pressures or topaz radiances, right? But that's not exciting, and also not at all what Luster needed, in my opinion. Now, I could be totally wrong about this card. There could now be a engine where this is exactly what the early game Luster wanted, and you're able to cycle off all these angelic pressures, you know, bring back the pentons, give us the double cost reductions, and that's all fine. But a lot of times, Luster just needs to survive the early game and then play this big late game combo in the, you know, what was Shin and Michaela, now into Michaela and Flagellum to clear the board. So... I got to do some brewing. I got to get, you know, back in there with Luster and see what's going to be getting cooked up. Again, obviously you want to be playing things like Penton so you can get the reduction. You want to be playing the on because Luster is also the other on summon the deck yellow. It just is what it is, right? We can play the two costs, which helps us make our spells cheaper. And it's also counts as a reduction. There's stuff that we can be doing, but I'm just not sure that's going to be good enough where again, Flagellum plus Exhaust Nexus is a real you know, king or winner of the set three for luster reveals. And I know I wasn't going to talk about 
vanillas in these set reviews. But I do got to give a shout out that yellow finally has now a one cost, one reduction and a two cost, two reduction. And both of them just happen to be angels. That could cycle very well if we're getting back to like the two cost aggro side of things and getting value off of let's ramp into something like, or even Alice, right? Alice does well when you have all these free reductions that can combo into her and then have a big minus for the turn. However, they are still very weak, but again, that's kind of just yellow's thing. You have weaker BPs that play well into Blessed Cathedral. So nothing to write home about yet, but I love the artwork. And I love that yellow finally got a one cost one reduction, but remains to be seen if we do anything with it. Oh, and then of course we got the bird folk as well. So Eagle Rider, oh man, a, a bird riding a bird, right? It's kind of weird, but when destroyed by opponents, select one of your opponent's spirits, reduce its BP by 3000. This one, doesn't look all that exciting, but then when you remember that you combo it with Raphael to get the BP uh, or the core moving to make something level one, that now you're threatening a, hey, if you block this and if you have a big spirit that has a level one 3000 BP, now I can take that with me, right? And then it has that weird side of when the spirit attacks, reveal one card from the top of your deck for each level one spirit you control, add one bird folk spirit from reveal cards and discard the rest. So it's like, I just talked about how Otherlander finally came online in set three, right? And there's a ton of great cards for it. Bird, what is Bird Folk doing? Like, this just feels like it's just not there yet. Yes, we do have more Bird Folk. And I get that the, the Nexus is, like, insanely strong for what it wants to be doing. But what we have a six cost. And then we have a seven cost that we want to be playing, right? So it's this very, like, heavy mid-range deck that just isn't there yet. I do appreciate that it makes more sense now for what Raphael wants to be doing. But it's ultimately just not there yet, in my opinion. So Birdfolk mid-range, sometimes set four, maybe. Um, and then, of course, we have to add the other one. So four costs, another Birdfolk. When destroyed by opponent, view the top card of your deck and either uh, return to either the top or bottom of your deck, then draw a card. Okay, so now we're getting the cycling. And here's where I got to give another shout-out to Harpiness Palace, that whenever your opponent blocks one of these Birdfolks, it's going to make them level one. So... Now, if we're thinking about a deck strategy that, you know, we got to keep our own guys at level one as well, which does feel kind of bad. But if we're playing things like Topaz Radiance and giving them a little bit more BP, you might be able to like trade up your opponents into your opponent's spirits, especially if they're playing like some white control variant. It's just making you do a lot of work. I will say, I really do love that when you think about yellow overall and you think about Okay, what is yellow super weak against, right? A lot of it is going to be core removal. Well, now because we get to play Harpy Nest Palace main deck, we do at least make our purple matchup a little bit better. Yes, we're still going to feel very bad in the red. That's just something you can never avoid, but it's like somewhat coming together. I just don't think that the, you know, uh, the cards that we have or the spirits that we have are really worth it yet. Unless we see something like, oh my god, purple is everywhere, purple is king. Well, there's a lot of anti-purple stuff just really baked into this that also does well into other colors that it could be fine. So like in a world where the format slows down, which again, arguably it is because of Floodstream and Red takes a back seat, I think Birdfolk could be really strong, right? It is just an absolutely insane nexus that you have, but it just requires so much work to get there where, again, we just saw Genbu which is going to be insane and exactly what Fable Beast wanted. We saw other landers, which just gets to flood the board, but then I guess that falls off if we think about, oh, if they're going to have Curse Combo, that's not as good. So is there a world then where like other lander just wasn't good enough and now Bird Folk is suddenly the second best yellow deck? Could be. There's a weird world for it, and I do like you know, where bird folk is at least lining up. But again, I think the quality of spirits just isn't there yet because we need more bird folk and we need more bird folk that care about being stuck at level one, where again, we have that two drop that protects our four costs and higher from having their core strip. So there's a lot of like really cool, specifically anti-purple, anti-white baked into this like sub theme of yellow, but I don't think Raphael is good enough yet. And then it makes you wonder, okay, like it's cool that we got all these bird folk, but where does that really line us up? So if I have a wish for set four, it's that we get a different, uh, you know, X rare for bird folk that really brings us all together. And then moving in there to the Nexus and Magic. And unfortunately, these are going to be really short and quick, but we have Radiant Pyramid Triad. When placed, view a top card of your deck, return to the top. And then during your attack step, when your spirits reduce zero by your opponent, draw a card, right? So again, a lot of this anti-purple that like we don't care about, maybe it's a sideboard card, and then a win place that like just doesn't matter. 
sure it's cool for like the turns where you really want to line up your other lander spirits and you just like aren't sure where it's at yet like that's fine but ultimately i think this one is just going to be a hard skip not much to talk about right and then magics like not much to talk about discontinue i love that it's the anti-blue theme of like hey it gets milled so it goes back to your hand but then the main and flash is just like very bad like just a 2k isn't good enough we can be playing things like topaz right in so again two cards just very quick back to back not excited with magical light another one that it's like if we get some big like have to find spell for like an other lander payoff or a luster payoff like sure this might find a home somewhere but ultimately it's just not good enough for what it wants to be doing right now again this is a four drop so remember that this does kind of line up with this like pumpty dumpty world of like Pumpty Dumpty lets you find it. Okay, it's a four cost. It goes to our hand. We can then play it. We can then dig for like other lander win the game spell, right? Like maybe that's a thing in set four. So this is another card where, and it obviously has an other lander on it who is also a four drop. Like I see what they were doing for the other lander deck for this card, but we don't have the other lander payoff yet for this card to make sense. So like very bad right now probably insane next set if we get like some other lander win the game type of card and and there is one in japanese battle spirits where it's like if you have like the king queen joker and like one other card in play you get to completely board wipe your opponent like destroy all their spirits destroy all their nexus if i remember correctly right that would be worth it that would be a card that says like yeah let's play magical light let's dig for it and other lander like floods the board finds the thing and then you like your opponent can't come back from that you are saying i flood the board I now board wipe you this turn, and now you have to rebuild while I have all these symbols on board, right? That would be insane, but it doesn't exist yet. So until we get it, this one is just going to be on the back burner. But I can appreciate that it is a four cost, with, which works exactly with what you want to be doing with Pumpty Dumpty, as well as like getting us to closer to finding that spell that matters, if it matters at some point in the future. And then we have Rapid Rule. Uh, during this turn, all your spirits that cost two or fewer cannot be blocked by your spirits that cost five or more. This is really cute for like God Beast Behemoth two costs, like make a bunch of stuff unblockable. Then you play like some number of somersaults, but like, I don't like that deck. I think Genbu just wants to be doing something better. But if your key spirit is God Beast Behemoth, then by all means, you got something super cool in set three that can kind of breathe a little bit more life into it, even if I'm not perfectly sold on this being a good card. So that out of the way, let's talk about the first drafts for the decks. Now, again, nothing exciting this is just fabled beast the deck right you've seen it time and time again the most important thing is two parts one we have enough fabled beast now we're running flying turtle feels fine and then genbu is the unblockable top end that we really wanted to help bring this all together and then of course i gotta give a shout out to phantom beast king lin which can make a bunch of your opponent's spirits uh be level one which then even just further cements the fact that dual eagle and hippocampal and maybe Clockodile is supposed to be in here, but man, I love hate that card. Uh, but it is another Spirit with Bless, which would make sense if we just want another Fable Beast that also has Bless and checks the box. And then for spells, right, we have the rest of it that looks normal. The one thing you might see that's a catch out, which I've really been loving as of late, is Spiral Tower. Because keep in mind, Genbu makes Dual Eagle unblockable. We then get to slam a spirit into our opponent. And if they block it, right, now it's going back to our hands. So we're not losing anything and also untapping the dual eagle. So it's just a way that in the late game to really make sure that you're getting those spirits cycling as you want them to, while also always having enough fodder to make sure you're getting the best parts out of Gembu and dual eagle turn after turn after turn, assuming that Blessed Cathedral just didn't get you there to begin with, right? And then for the other one, we have the other lander deck, the other, other, other deck, right? Which is just like three, four, five, and six cost the deck, vomit a bunch of stuff onto the board, have a bunch of value in just getting to play these spirits. And then of course, Joker just still being Joker and Joker getting to attack for unblockable damage is really, really good. So then of course, we got to find these other three, four, and five cost uh, spells that all work really well together. So Topaz Radiance is one that like, you might want to swap it out for like, a Gleam of Hope, because Gleam of Hope is a three drop that also can then work with Princess Anne. 
and gets off of like Pumpty Dumpty and all that stuff. So there's a world where like all those work together a little bit better, but just from a like streamline, got to push early points of damage. I really do like Topaz Radiance that lets you get in the chip damage early on. And then can also make sure that your Pilgrim survives. Like going up to 7K is super relevant in case your opponent tries to block it, which then means on your next turn, that Pilgrim is more likely to connect with Bless because they lost a spirit. So with that, that is our yellow review for set three. Did go a little bit longer than what I'd like to, but I think there's a lot of interesting discussion points in, in this set review that I think that hopefully gets players excited to try it out. Like at a minimum, I think other lander is going to be super fun to build with and super fun to test out. But I think there are a lot of other parts of yellow that are going to be really interesting to see how they turn out and how they get to develop as a set grows because getting to like flood the board against, you know, spoiler flood stream, I think can lend itself very well for the other lander archetype. We're just quickly able to rebuild and not allowing uh, blue to get those control pieces online that they want. So with that, my friends, a lot more uh, videos to come this week. Going to try to knock out all of these. I did get all my proxies printed. They're sitting there on my printer. I just have to cut them up. So set three videos very, very soon in terms of gameplay. And I cannot wait because the early lists that we've been testing have been super, super fun. So with that, my friends, stay safe, stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.